Welcome to Landmark Implement's customer support help videos. These will help you diagnose common issues in a timely manner. When contacting the AMS helpline, you must leave a message. The message is then sent out to all of our CTS employees. The first CTS to get it will then return your call. Also, stay connected with Landmark. Download the Landmark app today. In this session, we will cover combine maintenance and some adjustments. Uh, we're going to start off at the left front of the feeder house on this S680 combine. want to point out, guys, to begin the season, we want to make sure the reverser gear case right here has got adequate oil quantities. And if you do your own maintenance, it is recommended that we drain that oil annually and replenish the gear case with a HD460 a synthetic blend that's that's made for that gear case. If you can see it, there is a dipstick here underneath the drum height adjustment. It needs to be checked with the feeder house in the fully raised position. Uh, from that, it's a good idea to make sure there aren't any leaks occurring around that gear case. If so, I would be in contact with with your dealer. As a rule of thumb across this combine, we want to make sure all the chains and, and belt tensioners are fully tensioned to specs. And if you can see this, there's one here on the feeder house drive belt. This particular combine is equipped with a five speed um, feeder house drive, which is why we see a, a regular banded belt versus a variable shiz. We will, in another segment here, talk about the lubrication requirements of that other system. This system doesn't require too much lubrication as far as greasing. There are seal bearings on both the bottom and the top side of this system. Right above this belt area is what we call a single point coupler. It's where we supply electrical and uh, hydraulic functions to our header equipment, our front end equipment. Pretty important, guys, uh, anytime you disconnect or reconnect the headers that we have the key switch turned off. Uh, not a good idea to make or break electronic power um, with the key switch on. It, it can be hard on controllers, hard on equipment. So try to remember to shut that key off. Also, before you connect, make sure we're clean. We have electronic contact cleaner as our recommended product to use to clean these surfaces. Please do not use braking parts or ether type type of products uh, very difficult or very hard on this electrical connector so you can see here this one is pretty clean take the time to make sure the header half as well as the combine half is is clean one adjustment I want to point out on this feeder house very important with flex heads whether it be a draper or an auger head is the face plate angle Deer has a recommendation that we take this pivot bolt right here, which is the main pivot bolt for the face plate. We position the feeder house about 35 and a half inches for a flex draper and roughly 34 inches for a, an auger head. A little bit hard to see this, but we have this one set just a shade under 35 and a half. Once that's done, we loosen three bolts, two up here, one down underneath this shiv on each side, and then lay a torpedo level on the vertical face plate of the feeder house. Uh, at that point, up here on top, there are some adjustment rods where we take that face plate either forward or backward based on what our bubble in the level shows. So. Pretty important, guys. We try to have those set from the stores as, as we send them out, but tire changes, tire inflation pressure, rear axle position, changes in the head that you might have bought will uh, lend credence to the, the importance of adjusting that base plate. This combine is equipped, as many are within Deer's STS lineup, uh, with a high torque, variable, fully variable speed feeder house drive. What I'm going to talk about maintenance-wise maintenance is also applicable to John Deere's heavy-duty drive. Looks a little bit different, but uh, essentially is the same design. We would recommend, from a maintenance viewpoint, that we keep the belt tensioned properly, as per the operator's manual. This one, I would adjust a little bit differently if I were doing the maintenance on it. You'll notice how this idler has got this belt tipped up a little bit. 
I would bring this idler down within the slot on its bracket to where this belt, side of the belt and this side of the belt are parallel with each other. And then follow the procedure back in this area to, to bring the double set of shivs back to get our eighth inch gap at the front variable shivs with the feeder house slowed to its minimum position or speed. Don't forget once that adjustment is done and you're happy with what you've done, not to check the tension on the upper uh, electric clutch belt. It will loosen a little bit as we slide this upper set of shivs to the rear of the combine. The other half on the maintenance side is lubrication recommendations. Um, I'm going to roll this around and you'll get, be able to pick up a couple grease fittings. I roll it around as the face of a clock puts the grease fittings at 12 o'clock straight up and approximately 2 o'clock position. As a rule of thumb, and this is fairly easy to remember, 12 pumps and 2 pumps uh, with a flex head every other day minimum and with a corn head on a 10 hour basis or daily. Uh, grease recommendations is what deer sells is a synthetic food grade grease. I would not recommend any other grease for this system as well as a rotor drive system. Uh, greased with the, with the opposite adjustment, it is greased with the variable speed at its maximum speed. Very similar to where this system is set with the belt down in and the shiv spread apart. Uh, once the greasing is completed, I would suggest that we return to the cab, start this system, whether it's got a flex head or a corn head on it and cycle the sieves, shivs three or four times from high to low and then return with, especially with a flex head, return that speed to low, recouple the single point with the key switch off and continue to harvest. We're going to talk now about the separating and the cleaning area of, of the combine. We're going to start with the threshing up here with the concave. What I want to point out is the fact that if you do or have switched concaves yourself from the small wire coming out of wheat possibly to the round bars this combine is equipped going into soybeans this fall that you take the time and this procedure is outlined in the operator's manual that you level and proportion this concave each time that the concaves are changed out. Moving farther back we're into the separating area with the separator grates here want to point out that you'll notice on this these first two separator grate sections that these spacers are installed in the store what we call the storage position on the top side of the rail this is where they should be set for wheat coming into the fall it's a pretty good idea to move them as this number three is is showing where we actually space the separator grates down slightly the front three on the 680 can be spaced as the third one is shown the back one has to stay tight due to the return cross auger for the tailing system being uh, inter interfered with in that area of the, of the combine. This same adjustment uh, is applicable back through the 60 series combines, so 60, 70, and, and all the S series. So, Good idea to move it. It will help with soybeans, allowing a little bit more room for that material to move through the cleaning area, the, the separating area of the machine as well as in corn it will tend to keep the cob tipping as we call it to a minimum with the cobs being pinched between the separator tines and the grates so should help the grain tank sample some. This section we will spend some time on what Deere calls full tier 4 emissions uh, those combines that were built in 2014 as well as this current 2015 build year there are some new changes. One of them is the utilization of DEF or diesel exhaust fluid as part of that emissions reduction. We're going to show you some component changes. Up here we have a debris management filter that cleans the air going into a blower or a supercharger which in turn pressurizes the box with those components that take care of the emissions to keep that box clean as well as to keep those components cool. Along with that DEF system, we have a pump when the ignition key is shut off that, that cleanses or purges the DEF from that system. I want to point out 
that we make sure if we do shut the battery disconnect off that we allow that pump to complete or run through its cycle. On 680, 690 combines, the battery box is right here. The switch is, is on the side of it. 670, 660 combines, the battery box is on the right hand side of the machine. Uh, and the switch is near that. So the guys with the larger combines, uh, that pump may be a little bit hard to hear. So make sure you walk around by the engine compartment ladder landing and listen for that pump. Once it's shut off, you can return over to this position and shut the battery switch off. Another important thing that we don't always mention but definitely should is keeping our combines clean and free of as much dirt and debris as possible. That has got been important for many, many years, but it's probably accelerated the importance with the S-Series combines. Uh, they do make a cleaning guide that you can pick up at your lo local dealer that shows those areas of concern that deer has. But a good idea is to maybe buy a leaf blower, keep that in the pickup, or make sure you have a portable air compressor. And you do take the time, if you're doing your maintenance first thing in the morning, that you walk around, check things, clean things out, uh, reduce that potential thermal event hazard as, as much as possible. So another idea or concept that's been talked about uh, for many, many years is possibly dragging a chain uh, to, to dissipate uh, static electricity. If you do that, guys, make sure that you find an area that you can bolt that chain to and that you remove the paint from that surface and bolt that link tight to the frame of the combine. It uh, doesn't do us a whole lot of good if, if we believe in, in doing that, that, that if we do do it, that we make sure we have an adequate ground and, and it's not just a loop chain around the rear axle. So, Spend some time here on the straw chopper. Uh, pretty important thing that we keep up to snuff and, and, and provide good maintenance on. Uh, knife bank, we got two different knives. We have a stationary knife bank here that that is utilized during small grain harvest. That knife bank has got flippable knives that can be reversed. Make sure you check to make sure they are tight and in good shape. Uh, dull knives not only create problems with sizing residue the way you desire, but it also creates an additional horsepower load on the combine. We'll go around here to the back. I knew that was going to happen. I think we're in. Recommend, are you ready? Sorry. We recommend daily that we would check our rotary knives or those knives that are attached to the chopper rotor. You can see here we can raise the chopper on this S series, put the chopper gear case into neutral, and be able to roll the drum around by reaching in and flipping those hammers around. I would recommend on any STS combine that we take the time to check these knives daily. Uh, the problem we have is when we do lose even one out of 44 knives, it sends this chopper into a vibration situation. Uh, very hard on these STSs to actually feel that vibration in the operator seat. So. Good idea to uh, make sure they're all present and accounted for and in good shape. Make sure they're sharp. Again, proper residue sizing as well as uh, horsepower draw. It's good to have things in, in top-notch shape. Another thing while I'm under here, you'll notice we've got some, some, some tailboard fins here that direct the residue for your spread pattern. Make sure they're not worn down to where they will catch or grab in this front area of these bins uh, residue and cause problems with your spread. So just take, take a look at the sheet metal, take a look at the components and make sure they're in, in good operating shape. When you do replace chopper knives, it's definitely a, a good idea. They will be sold in sets of four or a total of eight in the box. At a minimum, we definitely want to replace uh, four if one knife is missing. Uh, if two different knives are missing on two different hangers, uh, then we definitely replace eight. 
When we do replace those knives, we replace the two on the, the hanger that had the broken knife, and then we go over in a balanced effect from center. We go over in 180 degrees on the drum. We replace the second set of knives to keep this chopper in balance. We will talk about one last point that's related to the straw chopper and or and or spreader, and that's what Deer calls a cob deflector. It's this lever right here. Uh, as its name implies, it's important that that be in that deflector position for a corn. If not, what happens is we tend to send the cobs forward back into the cleaning shoe. Uh, inevitably, a, a fair amount of those cobs hit the top chaffer teeth and bend those forward. So if you've ever had that happen, it's no fun not only to straighten the teeth, but to, to cough up the money, I should say, to have to replace that chaffer due to damage. So. Again, one, make sure when you're making your adjustments at that time that you remember to, to move that cob deflector door to the correct position. One system on the combine that I know most everybody understands needs, needs to be adjusted is our elevator systems, whether it's the tailings or the clean grains we have here. Down at the bottom is where we make that adjustment. We've got a shield that normally takes, is taken off on many of the combines, and this one we take and loosen these four nuts and then make the adjustment here so we slide the bearing and the auger assembly down to take up the slack in the chain. Pretty good idea guys that we have that tight enough that we can move the paddle chain with our hand back and forth but we cannot pull that chain away from that bottom idler sprocket. Along with that an operational recommendation guys with all STS combines is that if we have our fountain auger or our, our auger in the grain tank covered with grain, can't get the grain out of the tank due to waiting on the grain cart to come through the field, that if you need to stop, that we make sure we leave the separator running. Disengage the header, stop the hour meter, but keep the separator running. Uh, you can idle, certainly idle the machine, no need to keep it at full RPMs. But what we have had in the drier grain conditions is that grain, if you shut the separator off, will funnel back down through that fountain auger, back through the head of the elevator, down this elevator and pack into the bottom. Uh, you go to re-engage the separator and uh, we have troubles with particular component damage blowing out the bottom of the elevator due to that grain being packed in the bottom. So if you've ever run across a machine or seen yours with a bent adjusting bolt here, more than likely that's what's happened in the, in the past on that machine. On the S680 and S690 machines, they contain an active rethreshing system or an active tailing system. This is that system on this 680. At the top there is one crop change to that rethresher. If, if you can see it on the video, they do show a corn position and a, and a wheat head position. I want to point out, there's a little bit of confusing, confusion there, but what I want to point out is that in the fall crops, in, in wheat or in beans and corn, that we want to make sure we're in the up position or in the large grain setting. With wheels and tires, sometimes those systems on combines are ignored. I want to make sure, and most every wheel within on Deer's combines are, are marked or stamped or tagged with what pressure they recommend running as well as we want to make sure that the wheel bolts are all tight and in, in their proper place, both on the front axles as well as on the rear axles. Uh, there are those torque recommendations. Uh, if it's not tagged, make sure you get a hold of your dealer. He'll have those specifications for you. So. Right. Talking about feeder house conveyor chain adjustment here, it's um, one of the newer style, I should say, that was uh, introduced midway through the 70 series and has continued on into the S series combines. It's like many tensioners on this combine, it's a, it's a spring, a wash, and a bolt, or a nut assembly we tighten up to keep within the guidelines of, of this uh, piece of metal here. What I want to point out, guys, just to make sure you remember, is back here in this area, we still have a bolt and a slot as we pull that chain adjuster forward. Uh, make sure there's some slot left before you make that chain adjustment. If there's very little slot to come forward, it's time to loosen the chain, slide the drum back, and, and remove a half length from that conveyor chain. So, 
This can look and appear tensioned uh, with a chain that's completely loose due to the fact that we were out of slot and we're just pulling against uh, the end of the slot with the eye bolt. Also, while we're in this area of the combine, I want to point out the rock trap lever. Uh, make sure before you ever go to the field the first time in the fall, especially that, this, that the rock trap is shut and secured. Uh, once in a great while, it'll, it'll be open. Um, somebody's got it, they leave it open in the wintertime, whatever, and a guy uh, definitely needs to check to make sure everything's secured and shut so that we do not lose crop unnecessarily. Would you like a support video produced for an additional topic? Please email guides at landmarkimp.com. For further support, contact your Landmark location. Landmark Implement, building our business one satisfied customer at a time.